Well, good morning. In my view, we are now facing the biggest peacetime emergency of recent times. We are just days away from potentially crashing out of the European Union without a deal. The basic rules of cabinet government are no longer working. Parliament has seized control, but is unable to reach agreement on the options. Politicians and public are exhausted by Brexit, yet we could be making important decisions now that will affect this country for decades to come. <clears throat> the Prime Minister's initiative to reach out to Jeremy Corbyn to seek to avoid a no-deal Brexit is welcome. So also is the cross-party bill being led by Yvette Cooper today. But here's the point. The threat of a no-deal exit has not gone away. Not least because we have still to reach agreement with the EU on the extension and its terms. This morning I have written to the Cabinet Secretary, Sir Mark Sedwell, and asked him to break precedent and publish his 14-page document setting out the catastrophic consequences of a no-deal Brexit. Extracts of this appeared in yesterday's Daily Mail, but so far have not been made available fully to members of Parliament and the public. The publication of such advice now is vital to ensure that Parliament is fully informed and to avoid any suggestion that information has been partially leaked to support a particular point of view. In these exceptional times, it is essential that neither Parliament nor the people are excluded from being involved in a process that will have such profound consequences for our country. I was encouraged by the Prime Minister's speech last night. She seems to have rightly, if belatedly, come to the conclusion that she cannot continue to plough on alone with her deal. Theresa May was also right to reach out across party lines in the national interest. And the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, was right to accept the invitation on the same basis. But whatever comes out of their discussions and the subsequent debates in Parliament, there must be a recognition that the public's right is also involved here. The public should not be excluded from Brexit decisions that will shape their lives, their communities and their country for years to come. <laughs> they cannot be expected to watch MPs have multiple votes on the Brexit deal and then wonder whether they will be given one final vote on whether they want to agree with that deal. For, mo for the moment, the most important priority is for the government to step back from no deal and ask for a long extension to Article 50. The cross-party bill before Parliament today should mandate this. There would then be time for a proper consideration of the choices facing this country. <coughs> if we haven't been able to sort this out in nearly three years, we are unlikely to do so in three days. <laughs> True. During the longer extension, parliamentarians can decide what Brexit we really want. And then the people should be given a chance mm. to decide whether they agree with that view. Mm. In number 10 last night, the Prime Minister said, we are at a decisive moment in the story of these islands, and it requires national unity to deliver the national interest. I completely agree. It is in the national interest for us all to step back from the brink and seek a route towards national unity. A long extension to Article 50 is now a prerequisite <coughs> if Parliament is to debate, scrutinise and decide on different Brexit options in a proper fashion. It is a prerequisite to civil servants to negotiate an alternative Brexit deal with the European Union and so that we have a really good understanding of both our departure and our destination before we actually arrive at it. It is a prerequisite for being able to form a stable majority in the House of Commons for a long enough period for any Brexit deal to be able to command parliamentary support. 
it is, I believe, a prerequisite if we are to stop this chaos turning into a catastrophe. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, a long extension to Article 50 is a prerequisite if we are going to let the people, and not just MPs, have the final say. Thank you.